Hey, this is Amy with Flower Moxie and we're building a small compote. So what I have is a four inch compote and I wanted to give you a size reference. Like we talk about on the website and in the packages, we'll say like a five to six inch or a three to four inch. So and we compare it to a mason jar. So you can kind of get an idea. This is a little bit larger than a mason jar, but I wanted to give you an idea of the size. And before we get started, I wanted to show you like when you get your greenery and your spray roses and your thistle, you get a lot of stuff like um, a lot of lower branches. I always pull that off. And why I'm showing you this now is because I have all these like little leftover pieces and that's what I'm going to build this compote out with. So when you're cleaning your flowers and you're pulling all this stuff off, you want to save it just because you can absolutely use it on smaller arrangements. And just to kind of give you an idea, um, one stem of seeded eucalyptus. So there's so many little things that I can tear off. Thistle, I don't want to put like all of this into a bouquet, so I'm going to pull like these pieces off. Um, I even love leather leaf because I can tear this off, remove like the lower pieces, and drive it into a compote. Uh, same with Italian Ruscus. They're not as long as like Nagy, but Nagy just went off crop and I have like one sad bunch um, that I'm going to use. And the same with spray roses. So these didn't really blow out and open the way I had hoped they would, but um, I would tear these off and I would, can I be more violent with them? <laughs> um, I would drive that into my, into my arrangement or use it in a boutonniere. So I'm gonna save these. And so anytime um, I'm working with flowers, I always have these little jars out to stick my broken pieces in. I talk about this in other videos, but it's so important. So, okay, this is the compote we're using. You can use chicken wire, um, a pin cushion. I'm gonna use foam because that's what most of my DIY brides use. It's not eco-friendly, um, so I try to just use it at like a minimal amount. This is probably like one-fifth um, brick of foam. So if you got one brick, you could cut it into fifths and it would work for this. I um, have it full of water, so you always wanna make sure you put water in your vessel. The wet foam will hydrate your flowers, but not enough to really keep them alive for a long period of time. So definitely have water in your vase, even though your foam's already wet. And then I like um, my foam to just be a little bit higher than my vessel, that way I can drive things to the side. Okay, so let's get started. What we're doing is we're taking those little pieces that I was talking about. I always like to give things a fresh cut. Um, and we're gonna green it out first. Having like a Lazy Susan's helpful just because you can turn it. And I have to say like, I always have a side that I like more than the other side. And I wish, <laughs> I wish that I could like, like my entire arrangement all the way around, but I've spoken with other florists about it and we all seem to like have our favorite side. That's why I love building like ceremony arrangements. Bait this a little bit more. That way I can drive those stems down. And it's just a matter of doing layering. I have some lemon leaf. That really goes far. It's not my favorite greenery um, as far as the look of it, but I tend to use it a lot just as that foundational element to like, you know, cover the foam or something like that. You get a lot in a bunch, so. Yeah, this Nagy's looking sad. She's like, that's off crop. And I managed to like find one in the cooler, so she just gave it to me for free because it was sad. So the reason I'm greening everything out first is it makes, um, it just makes quicker work of it, I feel. And you can set up like an assembly line if you have some helpers and just let them green things because once you green it, it's really beautiful and it's just a matter of backfilling with a few flowers. So when you're DIYing, it's especially helpful. Um, I have a lot of different greeneries. I have seeded uke, uh, the naggy, I have baby eucalyptus, um, salal, and leather leaf. So 
So I always like to order quite a bit and just tear those little pieces off and it tends to go pretty far. Okay, so I have it completely greened out. Um, I do have, still have some holes because we're gonna backfill with our flowers. Um, so greening it out, like it's pretty as it is. Like you could add more greens and it could just be like a greenery only centerpiece, which is beautiful. Um, but we're gonna backfill with our flowers and the flowers that I have are some of the ones that I've broken um, or ones that I've pulled off. So we will get started. As far as the shape, I wanna keep it kind of loose and organic, not extremely wild. Uh, your eye tends to like S, S shapes, so maybe I'll make it a little higher up here and let it like, you know, slope down on this side, but we'll see. So I'm gonna take this big quicksand rose, I reflexed it, and that's just a way um, to make the rose larger. It makes it, to me, look like a, um, makes it look like a garden rose. Getting started is the hardest part and it makes it even harder when you're doing a video showing someone how to do it. So I'm gonna put this one low and I have to build it a little bit backwards and then turn it around so you can see it. put this burgundy carnation on the other side. I tend to like to color block things. So anytime you're building an organic style, you want things on a different plane. So if I were to come in and put a rose directly on the same plane, it wouldn't, it would look a little bit, yeah, it would just, more symmetrical, less, I think, impactful. You want things at different heights. We'll figure out the placements of my filler flowers. On foam in general, I try not to um, move things a lot as far as take it out and restab it, but sometimes you can't help but make adjustments. That's where we're at so far. figure out what side I really like. So I'm coming in with a um, burgundy scabiosa. Here's some chocolate Queen Anne's lace that I'm gonna pair up with this quicksand because they're a little bit closer in tone. So we're doing a little bit of that color blocking. I have some chocolate um, lysianthus, which isn't necessarily brown. Sometimes it can come more of a toffee color, but a lot of times it feels like a little bit more mauve and um, oh, just kind of muted. So I'm trying to marry these colors together. And I just like to work in sections, so I'm spinning it a lot for the video, but I think um, and we're doing that grouping thing. So on Lysianthus, you usually get several buds attached to one. So I'm gonna see if maybe I can let him spill off the side without looking too awkward. I'm gonna bring this in on the other side. And in another video, I had some Estrancha and I pulled off the lower pieces because they weren't working in my bouquet and I saved it and we can backfill with that. So that's what we're doing. We have some thistle. To me, it's always good to balance out those really, really large blooms with texture and with smaller blooms. It's that variation that's going to make your bouquet interesting. sink this guy a little bit lower. Let's 
See how it's starting to come together? It's always hard like when you're building it and it's not the final product, it feels like it's not going in the right direction, but I just say don't stress about it. Just keep adding your flowers, look at your recipe, and um, when you see like a section or an area that you like, then build from there. Like, you can always adjust things, so don't be judgy about your arrangement until the very end especially if you're DIYing. That's why it's good not to go off of a picture. It's just because the flowers come in different each week. Like these um, quicksand roses were absolutely huge and they started out really small. So I have a lot of dark going on on this side. So I don't know, like I kind of feel like it would mess it up if I put this light right over in this dark. Um, in my recipe, I was going to use three of these, but because they're so large and they reflex them, I'm not sure, so I'm going to hold off until the end. That's why we always say, like, recipes aren't this exact science. Like, just because I recommended five doesn't mean that you have to use all five of them, because we all know that we can find, like, another place to, to put it. But sometimes they just come in really large, or they come in smaller. Like, I got a lot of Lysianthus, but they are smaller blooms. Uh, scabiosa, it sometimes comes with these clear straws on, unless it's like going to be really elevated. I typically will leave the straw on just to have it better supported. And keep in mind that you don't want holes, like you never want to look in and see your foam, but you, it's a balance of creating air and making sure that you don't have holes. That's why sinking some things is a really good technique. Like I'm going to sink this um, burgundy carnation because I still want that pop of color, but it covers a lot of that foam surface area. That way I can drive in like these more dancers and there can um, there's more air and breathing room in this arrangement rather than it just kind of all falling in on itself feeling compact. Okay, let's sift through my product. So I know I'm going to pull this off if I were to use it in a bouquet. So that's why we always start from the bottom, pulling off like your your lower limbs. And now I'm simply like backfilling with what would have been trash had we not repurposed it. So once you get those larger blooms in place, that's when we're backfilling with those more delicate pieces. I feel like, let me look in the mirror at this. Uh, I kind of feel like this guy's hanging out on his own. Uh, just a touch. So I'll adjust it slightly. There we go. A little bit nicer. Okay. So I feel like I just had that hole happening right here. So maybe I can backfill with this small um, carnation, but I kind of feel like it might be like too strong of a co concentration of carnations happening. Yeah, I, do, I don't love it.
Let's just try it. Let's see what that does. I can live with it. Like it wasn't my first notion, but one more scabiosa. So in my recipe, I thought I would put two scabiosas, but I feel like I need that third one. I'm gonna remove this straw. Yep, that's all we needed. See my foam slightly, so I'm just gonna dry this little piece of greenery down to hide it, and we're all good. So I used three carnations, two quicksand roses, I used three scabiosa, probably like um, maybe one sixth bunch of each different type of greenery. A lot of the greenery I used was just the lower sections, and then um, really just the lower pieces of the estrancha. So one bunch wasn't even, or one entire stem wasn't even dedicated to this. And probably one or two stems of the lysianthus. Um, and one chocolate queen ants lace. So you can build a pretty large arrangement from just your scraps, the things that you break. Um, and so this would probably run around that 15 to $20 mark. So if you have any questions, then feel free to email us, leave, leave it in the comments below, or visit us at flowermoxie.com. Thank you so much.